uh, as I said to you, 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 you shouldn't hear it. It's a miracle you're here. It, is a it really is. It is. You're such a survivor. It's extraordinary. I don't know where you found that inner strength to, to cope. I think, as the, the book explains, um, you know, I was quite a, a strong character as a child. So, yeah. um, and in those 18 years of being with Dan, it was suppressed. Um, and like I said to you, you can either be pitiful or powerful. And my mess now is my message. And I just want to help others mm. get their life back. If it can happen to you, it can happen to anybody, really, can't yeah. it? Nobody's immune. Nobody. No age rates, class or gender. Nobody's it's immune. It's very easy on the outside. And until you read your book, which is, an, which is remarkable, it's a remarkable story. But until you read this, you know, people always say, oh, you should just leave. Why don't people leave? You know, that's, that's the attitude. And it's never that simple. If it was that simple, we wouldn't have situations like yours. Exactly. And first of all, I say, you know, let's not put, put it on the victim. Ask, you know, why are you leaving? Asking him why is he abusing? Um, and yet it's not as simple as just get up and go, especially when you've got children as well to look, to look after. It's just not as easy. Well, you've been through so much. Um, and you're a campaigner, of course, and inspirational. How did you two meet? How did that <laughs> connection happen? It's, it's quite extraordinary. It was modern technology, wasn't it? Yeah. On Twitter, <laughs> yeah. I saw something that Rachel had written about a project she was working on. Right. Um, and I sort of looked into what her story was a little bit. And then I was just so kind of moved by it and, and amazed by it yeah. and, and inspired by it um, that I sort of got in touch and just said, you know, I thought what she was doing was brilliant. And then... There was a sort of an overlap, I think, on things that we were working on around young people, homelessness, right. um, uh, and, and looking after them. Uh, and so we sort of got together. And then as soon as I met Rachel, you just sort of get blown away by what an extraordinary <laughs> character she is. And, sure. and like you said, you know, the story, her story is an extraordinary story, but she's sort of amazingly turned it into something incredibly positive. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it must have been fantastic to get Michael on your side. Absolutely, he's yeah. not getting rid of me now. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, really yeah, being Welsh as well, I think. Uh, mm. And we're both passionate people. Sure. Um, and both want to help. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. You yeah. just both want to help. Yeah. You don't want anyone else to go through what you've no. gone through. Of no. course you don't. Tell me about tomorrow. Tell me what's going to happen. Um, so tomorrow we've got um, an event at number 10 and it's for International Women's Day. So there's a gathering and there'll be some really inspirational people there. Um, and then at some point then we're going to deliver the petitions that we've got running on change.org. So what is it you want to change? What do you want to happen? Oh, where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think basically the government really need to, to really take a look at domestic violence. I mean, like the white ribbon that I'm wearing today, everybody knows what a pink ribbon is. It's for cancer. Sure. But probably not a lot of people realise that the biggest killer of young women and girls, uh, women and girls between the age of 16 and 44, is not cancer. It's domestic violence. So Why haven't we got these in the mm -hmm. supermarket? It's not one day a year event. Two women a week are being killed at the hands of an abuser. 200 women take their lives uh, every year to escape an abuser and 10,000 try. Um, I often, you know, say this, that the stats and the figures and some people, you know, with the deaths and everything else. But then I say, if you want to look at it in monetary value, if that'll get through to you, it costs the economy £5.5 .5 billion pound a year and a strain on the NHS that's already bursting at the seams, £1.7 billion pound a year. You know, so we really need to invest and we really need to be looking at the abusers through the eyes of, of the lens of, of like a sex offender. You know, we need a serial perpetrator register. That is an absolute must. Mm. Um, and the petition around the restraining orders, you know, they're not worth the paper they're written on. I've not spoken to one person who's experienced domestic violence whose perpetrator have had a restraining order or licence conditions and they have not breached it. Well, reading your book, it seemed that nothing was really joined up because he should never have been able to get close enough to you to shoot you. No. Never. No. I mean, that, that's the thing, that should absolutely never have happened. I had All over th things. 36 police officers deal with my case in six weeks. So obviously, it's, think they're going to drop the ball, aren't they? Because yeah. they're not going to yeah. know. It's, yeah, it's, there was so much happening in that six weeks, um, and it's just raising awareness. Everybody should be, you know, trained in domestic abuse, um, not just you know a diluted version of sending somebody to go and listen at a seminar and then relay it back like to the police. They all need to be, you know, professionally trained in sure. domestic abuse and violence and listen to the victims' voices. You know, because if, if nobody's listening to the victims and survivors, how are they going to get it right? They haven't got it right up to now so we need something else well the thing is about about listening michael definitely listened to you and mm. i think your voice can make a massive difference here yeah mm. yeah i mean i think it's really important that you know it's amazing that you've 
you know, had us on and had Rachel on to talk about this, because not everyone will want to talk about it. It's something that people, you know, don't really want to accept mm -hmm. that's going on and the, and the scale of it. So just talking about it makes a massive mm -hmm. difference. And having a voice like Rachel's, who's, you know, got first-hand experience, to be able to listen to what she's, she's mm -hmm. talking about, and in such a kind of compelling way and in such an optimistic and positive way. And I it think also gives you hope as well, doesn't it? Because, Absolutely. I mean, you, looking at you, you're now happily married. Yeah. You know, your life is good. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you've got the scars, literally got the scars, you know, you can see on your leg, you mm. know, your leg was blown apart. It's a hellish injury that you had. But things do get better. They, they can do. get better. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. I think if you've got a good police force that, you know, are really be, you know, great advocates for domestic abuse sure. and, and are looking for them extra jigsaw puzzles that they sometimes miss to get a conviction, you know, and you've got the support. I mean, the, the girls do a brilliant programme called the Freedom Programme and it's opened a lot of eyes. It certainly opened my eyes when, I, when I'd when i left my abuser. I didn't even know what women's aid was seven years ago. So it's just getting the awareness out. Yeah, people have got to know and they've got to know that there's a lot of help out there as well. It would make a remarkable movie, a very inspirational, uplifting mm. movie. I think so. Maybe Michael knows somebody that can do something about that. <laughs> I'm sure he could. Listen, good luck tomorrow. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, do let me know what happens. Yeah. And um, I'd, I would recommend, the, the book is called The Devil at Home by Rachel Williams. It is absolutely incredible. Victoria Derbyshire says, incredibly poignant and powerful. And she knows. Mm. She knows.